Hey, Shogi here. Welcome back to the Minecraft World Building series. We've spent quite some time around here in Mosswood, 11 episodes to be exact, but I think it's time. Time for a bit of change. So we're going to pack some things, gather some materials, and head out into the world. So here's the vision, right? We're currently in the dense forest of the Sylvan Frontier, and on both sides of the forest you can see empty plains. I'd imagine some pesky humans would be after some precious timber, and we do tend to be an issue when it comes to deforestation. But we're going to use what the map has given us and envision ourselves a forest that's facing an issue with deforestation. So with forestry, you'll have lumberjacks and lumber camps, and then those logs that would be cut would head off into a sawmill where the timber can be processed into usable material. So today we're going to head towards the plains and found our first human settlement. So we're just outside of the Sylvan Frontier here, and we have a lot of options for villages in the area, but I'm really digging this one here. We've already kind of put a marker for this village, but it's got this nice riverfront, and the river is actually long instead of just cutting out really quickly. So as you can see, the river goes towards spawn, where we'll make the actual city eventually. But I'm gonna evict a villager here and set up base in one of these, we're going to do a little village transformation, so I'll need to knock down quite a bit of these buildings and replace them. So we demolished quite a bit of the village here. We did retain some of the structures because I'm actually going to reuse some of the sections for this town and place some buildings in the same spot. But this will be the sawmill town or lumber mill town. So all of the lumber camps around the area would feed their freshly cut logs into the town here and the mill will convert it all into planks and lumber for the main city to use. It probably would have started off as a small village, but over the years, as lumber demand increases, it would uh, it would have expanded into a town. And I've been calling this a town because I'm planning on kind of differentiating between villages, towns, and cities. Some villages in Minecraft are quite large, so actually this one had like eight buildings or so, which in my mind would be considered a town instead of a village. But when you're kind of building a whole world in game, you need to kind of limit yourself a bit. So a village to me is like two to four buildings or two to five buildings. And a town is six to 12 buildings. But it also depends on how big the buildings are too. So for example, we've got Lotus Village right here in the Southern Frontier. Uh, this Lotus Village, it, I would consider a village because it only has four Lotus Cottages. Of course, since they're fairies, you know, scale kind of matters as well but and then a city would probably have 13 buildings and up and then maybe a megapolis or a mega city would have way more we got to kind of tamper our expectations when we're building well we're in a creative copy of our world because i just recorded for over an hour and i accidentally only recorded the audio so we're gonna run through some things in creative because i'm not about to demolish everything and rebuild it so here we go. So eventually down the line, I think we'll create a few different cultures for the humans, but the main human civilization is going to follow a silk punk theme. It's kind of a style I'm familiar with, but I want to make it go a little more on the medieval side. If you don't know what silk punk is, it's basically Asian aesthetics blended with some steampunk. But I'm going to dim down the steampunk a lot, so it might be more so Asian fantasy if anything. And I've talked about it quite a lot, but a lot of the inspirations for this world is inspired by the world of Avatar The Last Airbender or Legend of Korra. So you might kind of see a little bit of that style, hopefully, if, if I can, you know, translate that into Minecraft. All right, but let's just kind of show you the general style on a small scale by transforming this little villager home right here. 
So since this is a lumber mill town, a lot of the houses are going to be mostly built out of wood materials. And, but since it is a town, it'll be a little more established than a village. So some of these structures will have a different stone type as well. So for this one, we've got a little cobblestone base. Um, but some of the other ones will just be straight up log cabins. So like I said, it's going to be very basic. But we'll start off with some spruce full, uh, spruce stairs. And then, bam, bam. Then we're going to put some posts there. So this one's going to be a little different than the other ones because this one's going to have an actual, I don't even know what you call it, but a little standing area. It's like a patio, but not really. So we're going to go, uh, going to bring these spruce slabs all around. Then you place spruce trap doors just on top of them. Basically, these are just little posts. Like I said, this is going to be a very, very basic, very basic build. So... And it's going to kind of stick to the vanilla theme, like the vanilla villager theme. Then we're just going to put some spruce slabs again on the top right here. And we're going to leave the corners blank. Use trap doors like this, one on each corner. And then you have to place one right here and one right there. So let's kind of look at what that looks like. So these are called flying eaves. So they're kind of a Chinese type of architecture. So, you know, kind of slopes upwards and creates this little sharp corner or not even a sharp corner, gradual corner, actually. But we'll do that for all four sides. And then we're going to do a very, very miniature hip and roof gable or hip and gable roof. Or this one's actually called a resting hill roof. Uh, you kind of just go slabs around these corners here and then spruce stairs, spruce stairs, spruce planks. And then last but not least, we're going to just do stripped spruce plank or stripped spruce logs. And then so it's a uh, very, very small scale, but this is what I would consider a very small scale. Um, resting hill roof here let's see what it kind of looks like from the bottom bam yeah that's like uh you know very very tiny but you know it's a, kind of like a little log cabin here i kind of like that it's the villager style you know it's very small very compact but i think we're going to knock out the very small buildings around here and then we'll jump right back in So we got all the small houses done. These are very similar to the villager styles. We're back in our creative copy once again, just to kind of showcase all of the small buildings. So this one I said is kind of for the head warden or whoever you know operates this whole thing. Then we've got a little barracks right here, or not a barracks, but kind of a mass sleeping hall. And it's following the same kind of uh, flying eave roof as well. But it's also called kind of like a parabolic roof. Or, well, if it was a parabolic roof, it kind of would have this little dip right here. Which I could probably add. But inside, it's just kind of bunk beds. I'm, I don't have enough beds at the moment, but eventually we'll get enough beds to kind of fill this up. And then we'll put a little bit of storage right in these spots right here for the workers to kind of have a little bit of personal items in this area. And then this one, this one's got, you know, this one's not actually wood. So since it is a town, there's going to be some structures that are a little more, you know, stable, I guess. So since this is a town, it's going to be a little more established. So some of the buildings will have stone types for the roof or other materials aside from wood. So this one, I really just kept the same Plains Village base, and I just changed up the roof a little bit. Can't remember exactly at the moment, but this type of roof is also an Asian style. It goes kind of flat, and then it just uh, drastically raises up there. But we've used some deep slate uh, bricks and deep slate tile up there. This one, we've got a little well in this area. 
little roof well where they kind of dump this uh, pot right inside. And we use a little bit of warped wood that I had that I had brought with me. We're going to use that very sparingly. There's going to be one other building that's going to, or not really a building, but another structure that's going to be using the warped wood. And then this one all the way out here. Very, very basic as well. Little bunk bed for two people. And then same thing again, flying Eve's roof. So we left it kind of scattered about like a Minecraft village instead of kind of making it a very compact. And I kind of like that. Well, we're finally starting to get back on track with the missing footage, but with any town, you'll also have some businesses and specialty buildings. So let's get building then, shall we? We're finally back in our survival world where we can actually take a look at some of the specialized buildings. So earlier I missed this one right here, but this one is kind of a, a little temple space. So there used to be a church built in this village and I took that down and since they had a church, I thought maybe I could add a kind of a place of worship for them. So this is a kind of a very, very tiny little temple where they would be able to come and venerate. So the interior, these are like kind of incense and it works great because it actually has it kind of floating up smoking. And then I, in my creative model, I had some um, uh, weeping vines come down here. They're kind of these red ribbons looking things. Um, I don't have nether access in this area, so I just kind of left them out for now, but I'm gonna come back and put those in but they'll kind of mimic those little red ribbons that kind of hang from ceilings. But yeah, they would kind of come here and kind of do a little bit of prayers. This would have some incense in there and they would kind of light it. Just a very cute little neat build where we were able to use trap doors to make the walls very thin and it kind of overlooks the scenery. And then right next to the kind of manager of this area of the town, we've got the mess hall. So we'll pop in free cam, kind of take a quick peek. Very simple design. Got a slight sloping roof. And we use the same deep, uh, deep slate tiles and deep slate bricks to kind of get a little bit of mixed look there. And a big old chimney. And then it's got these kind of support beams. Then you got a little overhang here for a little smoke break for all those little lumberjacks. But inside, very simple again. Got a chimney, very uneven, but that's okay. And they would kind of be cooking up some slop over here, kind of mass producing slop to, to chow down on. Plenty of eating dining space here, and some more dining space there. And then we got these support beams to support that roof. I didn't realize I did a four interior. It's very, very tight and uneven, but that's okay another specialized building right here we've got the blacksmith so this house i didn't actually break down i think it kind of fits this whole vibe so i might just keep this building right here and kind of have it as a separate business but i'll probably change up the roof a little bit to kind of match this one but this one is the blacksmith so this is where the lumberjacks would come and get some fresh new axes and then the residents of the sawmill town will be able to get fresh saws, stuff like that. The blacksmith here would be very wealthy, so they've got actual, you know, tiling for the roofs. And they've got a much nicer place than the others because they're supplying all of the tools for all the workers in the area. But there you go. Got a little workplace for all that. And then I'm missing some things here, but that there. And I'll be coming to kind of texturize this flooring here because 
they wouldn't be working with grass here. This area probably have some cobblestone or some gravel. You don't want to catch the grass on fire. The interior is relatively spacious. I've got to kind of move a bunch of the storage space, but we've got some stairs. <laughs> this will have a stair as well. And this would kind of be the living quarters where the blacksmith and his family would live. And they would have some quite some nice views of the mountains here. And then up here, we've got some little watchtower. Maybe the blacksmith family has a person that's up here as well to kind of overlook the whole town and make sure there's no goblin raids or, you know, anyone kind of attacking this town. And then maybe I'll put a bell here just to, so they can ring a bell in case there is, you know, there is a fight. But yeah, this one, uh, this one is originally a tannery or whatever for the villagers. So I'll probably be switching up this roof here and that'll be another business that, you know, maybe they're supplying boots and, you know, clothing for all of the townsmen. A little backspace here. And then we've got a little tower here to move things. Uh, how do I get down there? I need to make a, like little bridges to kind of connect this whole build area. And then we've got this massive crane here to pick up some timber. We'll take a look at it from the sky, but very structure. So a worker can kind of come up here and climb these ladders and kind of work from up here. They'll kind of be able to move this crane up and down. It doesn't, maybe it wouldn't more. I, I guess it could probably move. It's a little square to be moving, but you know, we are in Minecraft, but they kind of be able to pick up timber that's coming floating down from the river. But historically speaking, you would have these people that you would call log riders. But basically, you would have logs on the water like this that would kind of be floating down the river. So there would be kind of lumberjacks supplying the wood from lumber camps around this area. So right now, the deforestation line is right here. So Maybe there'd be a lumber camp right here that would be cutting down logs. And as they cut them, they would kind of send them down the river. So the river, well, ignore this spot. Let's just imagine that this is a river, but they would basically send the logs down the river. So the logs would travel, 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 and they would float down over here to the sawmill where the timber would be processed. But these logs wouldn't always just get down to the town by themselves. So you'll have some villagers standing on top of these logs and they would be called log drivers. They would basically stand on top of logs, have this little paddle thing, and they would paddle the logs downstream. So I think we'll probably have like a bunch of logs kind of looking like they're flowing down the actual river. I would put a villager on top of these, but when I was experimenting, they would always just walk right off and float in the water. So we won't do that, but just a little fun little lore bit to explain where the logs are coming from and kind of give this world a little more, you know, connected feel. So maybe I'll be building a bunch of lumber camps down these forest lines to kind of explain where all the logs or industry are coming from. But now that we've got some of the unique buildings done, it's time to build the main attraction, which is the actual sawmill. It's going to be run by a water wheel. So since the water is flowing down this way, uh, maybe that doesn't make sense, but that's okay. That's okay. Uh, it's flowing down here and I guess it just pulls there or I don't know, there's something there. So the river, the logs would float down the river, hit through the sawmill, get processed to planks and lumber, and then it would kind of be shipped down this way and there'd be a trade route bringing all the logs to or planks to other towns and cities.
Wow. I'm really starting to like the vibes here. I do need to come back and kind of add a bunch more decorations. Make it a little more lively, potentially. But, oh, I'm growing a little bit of potatoes here because I'm starving out here. But here's the watermelon. I'm not too sure about these kind of oak fences. Uh, I might remove them. I might just kind of add maybe some trap doors or something like that. Just to, I don't know. I'm not sure. I might feel like that's a little too many oak fences. But here is the water mill. We made it a lot out of a lot of kind of wood. But basically, the wood would kind of be coming from, I guess, from the forest right here. And then also, you know, when the logs kind of go down the river, they would come through here and get picked up by the crane, put onto the little area right here or they'll also be maybe wagoned in this direction so since force is right there wagons would come through here and bring all of the timber over here and then they would store the logs right here and then the logs would get converted into usable lumber for other cities and towns and whatnot and then we use birch for the water wheel here, just to give it a little bit of a different color. And then I used oak stairs for some reason. I don't know, just to break up the color a tiny bit, but this is where the water would kind of hit and spin the wheel. But the wheel would spin, and then that would spin the saws right here. And then they'd put the logs through and convert them. We'll have to experiment a little bit, but upstairs we've got a little living quarter space. His living space, living space is a little empty, but there'd be some beds here, a little fireplace, and some chests. And then they they could also overlook the water wheel right here. But I'm loving the vibes. I really wish that this water wheel would actually turn. I feel like that's the kind of the appeal of the create mod, just because you know. Moving parts really adds a little, quite a bit of life into the game. You know, like everything, there's like no movement here aside from the fireplaces or from the chimneys, but it'd be awesome if this thing would actually move itself. But I think we're running out of time for this episode. I will have to come back here and kind of add a lot more life around. Also, the all the villagers kind of died as I was building this area, so I'm very sorry to them but there are some villagers that are kind of just stuck hiding like there look at that this is what i hate about the villager ai is like they are horrible with you know moving but a lot of them kind of were moving around some of them fell and died and then some of them got killed by zombies these are the last two survivors of this village so i'll have to try to keep them safe and breed them up but I'll probably have to lock some of the villagers inside these houses somehow. But there still is quite a bit to do around here, so I'll probably stay around for one more episode to kind of decorate and do a few more things. But I do believe that's all the time we have for today. The new Minecraft 1.21 update actually just released not too long ago, but I'm not gonna update for a little while until, you know, some mods update. And I have some plans for that, so see you in the next one. Bye-bye now.